good guys it's your girl Keisha Ariel and welcome back to my channel now in today's video I will continue to answer some of your questions that you have been leaving on my lock content videos so let's jump right into it okay so the first question we have here is do you know any locticians willing to reattach my old dreadlocks local to me in Birmingham England I am struggling to find someone willing to do it for me now, when I got this question, I did actually respond to the person and there was someone that I know that deals with locks and stuff, but I don't think they actually do reattachment and stuff like that. So, um, unfortunately, I am not aware of anybody within Birmingham, England, because you know, that's where I am as well, Birmingham, England. Um, I'm not aware of anyone who, um, any locticians who can actually do reattachments. Now, I have to say, Say, outside of this question I have been getting a lot of people requesting um, me to provide some form of service such as like reattaching locks as well as lock grooming or removing their locks etc now I have really been um, considering this and um, you know you guys may um, remember I've shared with you all that I am a qualified um, hairstylist <laughs> um, so I know how to do consultations and all of these things that's that was something that I've always wanted to get into and you know kind of like went away from that but with everyone asking me these types of questions recently I am really starting to revisit that idea now I'm not 100% sure if that is something I'm gonna do anytime soon but I may be of assistance in the future because I mean you guys are asking for the help especially local to me so um, yeah I might consider getting back into that type of stuff but um, to help you um, anyone who is in Birmingham or anyone in the United States because I do get people from the United States as well asking me you know they're thinking I'm based in the US but I'm not but what I can suggest is just going online and searching for your um, yeah a local loctician to your area that's the best advice I can give to anyone who is seeking a loctician local to them however i would like to say that i do have a video on my channel which shows you how to reattach your locks so you can definitely go ahead and check the cards right here okay so moving on to the next question we have i have comb coils and i noticed some unraveling is that normal when starting locks and yes unraveling is normal like i've said as well i've shared this before the only um lock method that you can start with which can guarantee not unraveling is doing instant locks now i do have a video on my channel which show, shows you how to install them yourself if that's something you're interested in doing so definitely go ahead and check that video out but um if you know you're wondering if um unraveling is normal it is and um, don't stress too much about it your hair will eventually lock anyway okay so moving on to the next question we have how many times per month should I retwist my hair now that is a very good question now what I would suggest um, the frequency in which you should um, retwist your hair is um, once to twice per month right no more than twice a month and that is giving you a retwist session every two weeks now you don't want to retwist too often because you can't be applying too much tension to your roots which can lead to thinning over time so i would definitely say maximum twice per month minimum once per month and if you choose not to retwist your hair that is something you can also um do you know not retwist but if you're someone who is interested in retwisting your hair no more than twice per month right now if you have braid locks because as you guys know i am along my braid lock journey I have realized that when it comes to braids, me personally, I would only recommend retwisting or retightening your braid locks once your hair has grown um, about an inch or so, okay? Because um, in terms of new growth, you have an inch worth of 
new growth on from your scalp now reason why i say that is because as i have shared with you guys in my four week lock update with my braid locks that when um like the back of my hair it had grown up almost two inches and when i was retightening with the crochet latch hook needle it took not like a crazy amount of time but it took a much longer time in retightening the hairs at the back in comparison to my hair up top here because my hair up top it grew about an inch and I found it so much more quicker and easier to just you know one two one two one two with all the different um, locks up top etc or star lock should I say so um, I would say when your hair get to about an inch in length would be the best time to retighten your braid locks or if you're just using the um the crochet latch hook to interlock if you use the interlocking method to tighten your um or refresh your locks then i would say if your hair has grown about an inch that's the best time to actually um go ahead and retighten i believe now if you if it wasn't about an inch it, it's going to be a very tight pull and it might be painful so that's why i would suggest an inch if you have braid locks or if you're using the interlocking method i think that's the best way to say it if you're using the interlocking method wait until your hair grew about an inch grow about an inch you know what i'm trying to say okay so moving on to the next question we have when and where does the locking start on the hair with braid locks when and where does the locking start okay so when it starts um now during my braid lock journey i was sharing or seeing or noticing that my braids were starting to feel like they were locking around the four week mark so one month in and i did explain why i believe that is so definitely go ahead and check the cards above to hear what i have to say but i did explain why i believe that is the case now it says where it starts definitely at the roots that is where the locking starts from my personal experience and um i don't know that could also come down to my hair type as well but i would say from my personal experience that it starts um locking starts about the one month mark you'll notice something and also where it lock would be at the root first so hope that was helpful okay so moving on to the next question we have the hair closest to my face is taking forever to lock because it's constantly being moved i don't know what to do i have straight hair and started with the freeform method okay so with straighter hair texture or pattern etc you know what i'm trying to say um i always believe the best method to start with your, um, start your lock journey with is instant locks now if you want to free form of course you can now yes your hair will take much longer to lock because your hair is straight as as you've mentioned and when um mm, it, it it doesn't have a lot of curves and curl curves and coils <laughs> to like interlock and um tangle within itself so if you think about two straight hairs it's just like sliding over each other so it's gonna be a little bit harder so what i could suggest to assist with the locking especially if you want to do free form is back combing your hair so if you get like the particular um, part at the front of your hair that is taking forever to lock because it's been moved it just use the comb back comb it and um, just leave it be and the reason why um, that would help is because when you back comb the hair you kind of um, rough it up and it create little tangles within itself right so that should definitely help but um, he says, I don't know what to do. I have straight hair and started with a free form method. So yes, yeah, so if you're doing free form, if you have straight hair, I think that would be the best thing. But if you want more um, for anybody else, because obviously you said you started with a free form because that's what you wanted. But for anybody else with straight hair who would like to start their lock, lock journey is definitely try the instant lock method because... I think that's the best method for anyone with straight or loose, very loose um, 
curl pattern. Okay, so moving on to the next question, we have, I just got my starter locks, comb coils, on Sunday, September 5th, and I was told not to wash it until I saw my loctician again, which isn't until October 1st. I can't go that long without a wash due to a scalp condition I have. When is the safest time to wash it? Now you see, this is something I've never understood and I've even spoke about this last year in one of my videos, which I'll definitely link above for you to check out. Um, I don't understand why locticians are telling their, um, their um, what do you call it, their clients to wait X amount of time before washing their hair, especially in this particular case where your client has a scalp condition. Listen, when I went to college and I was studying hairdressing and all of these different things, a part of the course was um, we had to understand consultation, not understand, but do consultation. We had to understand our client's hair and scalp before we could do any form of treatment. Now, if you went to, um, if sorry, if your client came to you, if you had done a consultation, you would have noticed, oh, you have a scalp condition. So when should you start your luck journey? Um, or yeah, yeah, when should you start your luck journey? Because what I usually say is, if you have a scalp condition, um, it's best to first get that treated before starting your lock journey because I have had issues um, with my locks, which is why I ended my second lock journey was because I had a scalp, not scalp condition, but I had scalp issues where, you know, it was always flaking, always dry, and I wasn't understanding what was going on with my hair. And because of this dryness and having all of these flakes, it kept getting embedded in my locks. So after that experience, I've noted that Listen, if you're gonna start your lock journey, if you got any scalp issues, any scalp condition, make sure you get that under control first before starting it because it can impact your lock journey in a negative way. So when you have a client as a loctician who show up, you're supposed to assess their scalp, assess their hair's condition before you do something. And then now, because you didn't even do that, you're gonna tell them to wait until so roughly a month before they wash their hair. But now your client is saying, listen, I cannot go that long without washing my hair because of this scalp condition here. So, lacticians, please, not just because you know how to do locks, install locks or whatever, you need to really focus and provide real care to your clients here because you're a hairdresser or a loctician, you're still dealing with hair. So you have to really help them, you know, provide by providing the best care for them. Anyway, I, I know I kind of went off on that one. So the person asked, um, when is the safest time to wash it? Now, to be honest, because I do not know what particular scalp condition you have, and also I'm not a doctor, so I can't really like tell you how to really care for your hair. But what I've always said is when you feel the need to wash your hair, go ahead and wash it. Now, I have a video where I spoke about when is the best time to wash your hair. Definitely go ahead and check it out. I'll link it right here but when you have a scalp condition you know your hair best you know your hair better than I do so if you feel like your hair needs to be washed go ahead and wash it if you are more so not wanting to start your um, not wanting to wash your hair because you're scared of messing up your locks I don't care mess it up and reinstall it because guess what your hair will still lock anyway so that's the best advice I could give to you and anybody else who have any scalp conditions and have started your lock journey um, is wash your hair as and when you feel it is necessary okay hopefully that was helpful so after all that let's move on to the next question and that is air drying causes mold buildup right wrong that is absolutely incorrect. That is not true. Now, during my lock journeys, both of them, both of Jaden's and my oldest son and also my family, because you know, I've shared with you guys that my dad and my stepmom, brother, sister, they all have locks, right? And we air dried our locks. 
and throughout my personal luck journey like both of them combined which will give me a total of five years and also my oldest son when he had his locks that will give me another five years and Jaden was two years that's what about 17 years of doing locks and air drying never experienced mold never experienced mold and we air dried our locks now i don't like the idea that people think that this is true like oh air dry your locks and you're gonna get mold it's false now listen to the logic behind this and hopefully you guys can understand and and again i have never experienced it but listen to how i would put it to you to show you how mold would then get in your locks if you were to air dry even though it, it makes no sense but listen to this now imagine you have a wet cloth right and then you put it in your dirty clothes basket it's in there then you start putting more clothes on top of it it will start to mold do you understand why it will mold let me tell you it will mold because there's no air circulating through and because the moist or wet cloth is in the um, the dirty basket with other clothes on top of it not allowing air to pass through it the mold occurs but with your locks when your hair is wet and you're in the air around you they might be hot it might be you well, outside might be hot inside your house might be hot and you have breeze and air flowing through it it's going to dry it is going to dry no mold is going to be there or if you think about that same cloth I mentioned imagine now you hang it out on the radiator or on a hanging thing or on the line what's gonna happen it's gonna dry no mold is gonna form into it because there's air circulating through so when people come with this idea that air drying causes mold in your locks it is not true it is so false it is so wrong do not believe that lie i have never experienced mold in my locks my kids locks my family's locks ever and all we do is air dry our locks so yeah okay so moving on to the next question we have my hair is very close to locking but you can still see the braid pattern is that bad no 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 it's not bad it is part of the journey um i've shared um Jaden's six and seventh month lock update. I know it's too strange to twist, but it's still the same um, principle. If you look at his locks in these videos, you will see that his hair is starting to look more like locks, but you can still see the um, two strand twist pattern. It's the same with braids. Um, you will see the two strand twist pattern the braid pattern sorry um, until your hair is fully locked and your loose frizzy hair is what helps your braids um, the start lock method to um, the um, to kind of more smooth out and look more like locks over time so that's why I always say embrace your frizz don't be mad at it because that is what helps your starter locks to look more like locks as you progress along your lock journey okay so moving on to the next question I have what kind of products do you recommend for thinning hair to promote thicker hair for my soft and thinning hair loss at the top well I would obviously recommend my products my here we grow products you can go onto my website and check it out and um, I'm not just gonna say I'm recommending it just because it's mine but because I know my product does work now I will try and put on the screen somewhere like right here some of the before and after photos of my customers who have used my products to help them with their hair growth so if you are experiencing any form of thinning or even if you're not and you just want Want to maintain healthy scalp and healthy hair you definitely want to go over to my website right now and place your order for a bottle of my here we grow hair oil and of course my moisturizing hair butter and with that we're going to move on to the final question which is what oils do you use well I do use the here we grow hair oil um, also it says what moisturizing products do you use I use my moisturizing hair butter <laughs> And did you use a lock-in butter or gel and um, now I've shared with you guys and um, the lock-in gel or mold and gel wax that I do use I'll definitely leave a link in the description bar below for you to go and you know check that out and get your hands on it if you want um, but yeah that's 
the products that I have used in my hair. What else do you use? The Hair We Grow Hair Oil. What moisturizing products do you use? The Hair We Grow Moisturizing Hair Butter. And also, the hair butter can also be doubled as a body butter. So, two in one, of course. Good bang for your buck. And yeah, what I use as a locking gel or butter, I do use the Styling Dreads Molin Gel Wax. So remember to go ahead and check the cards above as well as in the description bar below for similar videos like this one. And if you found today's video very helpful, then please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. So until next time, we will be right back here with another video.